yourself. What? I'm sorry, Nancy, I forgot. That's all right. <laughs> so I want you to answer this question for yourself. What is the job title I'm seeking? Maybe even take a second to jot it down. Today, we're going to be talking about how to become more confident on camera so that when you go to video interviews and, and networking events, you feel comfortable, you feel natural, you can feel like yourself. There are some definite challenges for a lot of people to being virtual, to being on video. They feel self-conscious on camera. They don't like the way they look. They feel like they're in the spotlight. They just dread it. And I will tell you that until not too long ago, I was one of those people. As Christine said, I started as a theater director. Now, if you walk into a theater, if you remember walking to a theater, where is the director? Standing in the back. That was my place. I was in charge of everything, but I was standing in the back. Now, I often had to be on stage to lead a Q&A after a show, and that was fine with me, but being on video was something I dreaded. So I'm gonna talk you through some ways that you can prepare yourself to be on camera so that you feel natural, you feel confident, and you feel like you can be your most authentic self. So I'm gonna start uh, with the technical elements. I'm gonna share my screen. Sorry. It's in Word and not PowerPoint. Nope, I see it, now I got okay. it. Here we go. So now I got a little distracted by the big banner. This meeting is being recorded. I couldn't see everything I needed to see. So can you were still in slide? Word, just so you know, you're still in Word, Nancy. Can I move that? Can I move that? Can everyone see that? Not yet. Yep, you can't see it. No. So uh, right now you're not I sharing. I know what to do. Okay. Yep. Now you're good. All right, everyone can see that. All right, thank you for your patience. <laughs> As I said, we're gonna start with the technical elements. I'm gonna be talking about your camera, your background, your lighting. So when you prepare your technical elements, the first thing you wanna do is turn on your webcam. Or what I do is I will just start a Zoom meeting to start working on these technical elements. First is I wanna talk about the camera. Uh, this slide is showing you where the camera is, uh, on, at least on, on my PC. And you want your camera to be at eye, at eye level so that you're looking right into the camera. And there are different ways to do this. If you have an adjustable desk, that's fantastic. I happen to be using books. A stack of books is fine as long as they're stable. What's important to note about the camera angle is that you want your eyes to be two thirds of the way from the top of the screen. So right about here. And the reason for that is because of the principle of the rule of thirds. And if you're not uh, familiar with the principle of the rule of thirds, I'll describe it to you. The rule of thirds originally comes from painting. And the theory is that if you look at a blank canvas, your eye is gonna go to the center. But if you take your canvas and you divide it into thirds, vertically and horizontally, and you put your object on one of those thirds, it creates a more dynamic experience for the viewer. And the reason for that is that the brain actually has to do a little more work to go from the center of that screen where your eyes gravitate to that third. So your eyes are the focal point of your face. That's what you want people looking at. So you want your eyes to be on that top third of the screen. Here's the thing about lighting. When lighting is good, it's hardly noticeable. When lighting is not so good, it's just distracting. So in this picture, almost everyone here has an example, is showing you an example of what not to do. This person 
okay, I can see him, but almost everyone else is in the dark. And I wanna point you out to this person whose strongest lighting source is behind him. So not only can I not see this person's face, but it's distracting. So let's talk about where you're gonna put your lighting. Your lighting should be behind the camera and ideally at a 45 degree angle, not right in front of you. The reason for that is that a 45 degree angle will provide very subtle contouring to your face, which is flattering, but also it's more dynamic for the viewer. Now, if you're lucky enough to be near a window, that's great because natural lighting is beautiful. I'm actually near a window right now, and it is over there. It is at a 45 degree angle, I'm not directly in front of it. If you have a lamp like this it, with a bare bulb, you wanna bounce it off either the wall or the ceiling because otherwise it's gonna wash you out. If you use that wall or ceiling to diffuse the light, it'll bounce it just like a photographer's bounce board will do. Now, you still have your cameras on, correct? So you wanna take a look at your lighting and see what, the, what, what is the quality, what is the color of the light? One thing to be uh, aware of is that sometimes if you mix natural light and artificial light, you may turn orange. You don't want that, that's gonna be distracting. So it's important to take the time to experiment and move around and see what you have so that your lighting, so that you're well lit and the color looks natural. Another thing you can do with your lighting is go into your computer set settings and adjust your monitor setting because if it's too bright, that might wash you out a little bit. And if you need a little more light, you can, you can adjust the monitor setting so that you have a little more light coming from your monitor. I'll tell you why I'm showing you this picture. I recently attended a webinar where the presenter had a background very similar to this. It looked like something out of Architectural Digest. It was white and pale cream and light shades of gray. And like this lady, she was wearing a cream colored blouse and she was blonde. Needless to say, she blended into her background. So you've got your camera on, as you're sorting out your background, you want, it, you want a few things. You want it to be neat. You don't want anything back there that's distracting. You wanna make sure that you stand out from your background. And again, here's an example of what not to do. You wanna make sure you don't have anything behind you that is catching light and producing glare because that's gonna be distracting. I usually have a framed photograph behind me on my bookcase. I took it down this morning. I'll put it back up this afternoon because it was producing glare. What about glasses, Nancy? You no, know, wear I glasses. <laughs> you know, How does that work? <laughs> these are uh, these are readers, and uh, I have to. I do have to solve that problem. Um, I think by getting better glasses, because I'm just not going to be able to present without glasses. So please forgive me. I need new glasses. <laughs> So I have a disclaimer about this photo. This is professional actors, and this is a promotional photo for a play that was done virtually. So you can see all of their lighting is fabulous. Many of them have very neutral backgrounds because actors favor that, and often directors will ask for that. But the reason I'm showing you this picture is because of this person's background. I'll tell you what I like about her background. It's clean, it's elegant, it's simple, and there's depth. You can see that there's, there's some depth between her and that wall. And what that does is makes the audience feel like they're in a room with you. And that is gonna help the audience connect to you. This slide shows you where your microphone is on your laptop. That's useful to know. And a couple of other things to note about sound. If it's possible, be in a room where there isn't gonna be ambient noise, that's distracting. Now, I have no control over whether or not my upstairs neighbors decide to vacuum right now, but you do the best you can. And it's preferable to have some soft objects around you, meaning 
rugs, carpets, upholstered furniture, window treatments, because you're, if you're in a room with all hard surfaces, you're gonna have an echo and that's distracting. That's a very interesting point, Nancy. Yeah. I had no idea. I mean, to think about your surroundings in that way, I think is uh, awesome. I, I actually learned it. I actually learned it the hard way because um, this is this room is not where I work. This is my studio where I present. I convert my living room into mm -hmm. a studio. I usually work in the dining room, which is this beautiful room. You've seen it, Christine. It has this blue wall that I love. Great background for me. And I did a webinar, and one person noted. He said, "You know, the sound. You know, it was really echoey." And I was like, "Oh, I'm looking around. Hardwood floors, hard furniture, shades." not curtains, everything is a hard surface. And so I, I learned, it's fine if I'm coaching in there, I do my coaching in there because I love the view and it's big table to set up. But when I have to present, I move into this room because I've got a rug, I've got upholstered furniture and I'm a little further from the window as well. Mm -hmm. So now that I stopped sharing my slides, I'd love to stop for some questions about the technical elements that we just talked about. Anyone? I can't be the only one with questions. I mean, I learned something just now. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. And I did this all the time. And so does Nancy. So uh, there's got to be some kind of question. What kind of lighting should you use? That is a great question. And I'll show you what I have. I just, I just recently got this. It's a, a dimmable LED on a tripod, but I'm not using it right now. I'm not using it right now because I wanted you to see what you can do at home without any special equipment, because there's all kinds of money you can spend. You can get a ring light. Some of them are expensive than others. You can, you can really invest in lighting if you want to, and that's fine. And there are lots of places you can go to tell you what to buy. And you can also create good lighting with what you have at home. So for example, before I got my LED, I would sometimes use this from the hardware store. And sometimes it's a matter of going into another room and grabbing a lamp. I, I recently was working with a client who had to make a, a video. And for some months, whatever circumstances, he was in a hotel room. And so he didn't have all his stuff. And we spent, probably 15 minutes figuring out his lighting. I kept moving him. Okay, go to the window, go to, oh, the window, that's great. Now, can, can you turn on that lamp? Well, he turned on that lamp, he turned orange. That's where I learned that. So it's really a matter of, you know, you can buy fancy equipment and that's great if you enjoy that, but you can also be creative and, and work with what you have. And that's why I don't have my LED light on now because even though it's a great toy, I don't need it right now. It's, it's great for when I'm doing some kind of presentation at night when I do need it. We do have a question. Um, is it worth buying a ring light if you're a regular presenter? I um, I chose an LED over a ring light. You know, that's my preference. What's the difference? Yeah, I think try it. Uh, make sure you like the return policy. I mean, it's definitely, anything is worth trying. But sure, I mean, if you're presenting regularly, that's a little bit different than if you're preparing for job interviews and, and networking events. That's, that's a little bit different. How much is a ring light on a normal spectrum? Um, you can get one for $25. You can pay $150. Oh, okay, so there's a huge range. <laughs> yes. yes, you can, yeah, you can get one. A colleague of mine just got one for $25. And does a ring light attach to your computer? Yes. Well, okay. some do. Okay. The fancier ones are on a tripod. Oh, really? Okay. I, hence the price difference, I guess. Yes. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, turn it back over to you, Nancy. I, um, I actually wanted to mention something. I was so sure I was going to get this question. And um, sometimes you have to answer the question you wish you'd been asked, which is a good point, right, for interviews. Um, I'm really surprised that nobody has asked me about virtual backgrounds because a lot of people like them. And there are a lot of reasons to like virtual backgrounds. 
you you may not you may not have a space at home that that you can convert into a, a, a proper space. Some people like to have a logo behind them, but there are just a couple things I want to point out about about virtual backgrounds is that unless you have the green screen, anytime you move, part of your head's going to get cut off or your shoulder's going to get cut off. And not only is it distracting, but it, it removes the human element. You actually look two-dimensional and it's it's very flat. Remember I showed you the picture of that actress with the her whole room behind her. It's really great to have depth. So I can understand why why people like virtual backgrounds because you can get some beautiful ones. There are there are back virtual backgrounds you can get specifically for job interviews so that you've got a very professional background behind you. But if you're going to do that, it is important to invest in a green screen. So and they're at all different price ranges too. Okay. So that was the question I wish I'd been asked. <laughs> <laughs> we do have another question, Nancy. Sure. Um, when we go back to the eyeglasses part, um, there's a tip in our chat box. Don't sit the arms of the glasses on your ears. Tip the arms up towards your temples. This will point the eye of the glass a bit downward so the lighting is not bouncing off the eyeglasses. And you can still see. Thank you. What are your thoughts? I just tried it. Yeah, Does I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Well, maybe I should try that. <laughs> Does that help? I don't know. Does it help? Seems like there's not too much. Go ahead. I need. I find it works very well. Cool. I think it takes a little. I think it might take a little practice to get used to it. Go ahead, Anita. I can't hear you. You're not muted and I still can't hear you. Maritza says, it looks like it worked well. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. All right, All very right. good. So I'm gonna try that from now on then. I have a meeting this afternoon, so uh, I'm gonna try it, see if it works. <laughs> good. Well, thank you so much for that tip. I really appreciate it. What is a green screen? That's another um, question. It is, it is literally, a screen that's that's dark green that that you can buy. It's collapsible, and you put it behind you. Like a projector so screen. You, what is it like a projector Absolutely. screen? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It is like a project. Yeah. It is like a projection screen that you 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 set up behind you, and then your your virtual background. You you will be. It's what it does is it separates you from your virtual background. Okay. Because if you don't have the green screen, you're going to blend in, which is why when you move your head gets cut off. Everyone's seen this, I imagine, yes. right? Have you mm -hmm. seen this? And it's just, you, you look a little bit like an alien, a creature from outer space, <laughs> as opposed to a person. So again, they come at different price ranges as well. Okay. Cool. Thank so you. Th thank you for those questions. And thank you for that tip about the glasses. Now that I've talked about preparing your technical elements, I want to talk a little bit about preparing your material. What material? You've probably talked about this before because I know you've had uh, speakers who talk about networking and talk about interviews. And there are a couple things that you need to prepare. You need to prepare your elevator speech, the way that you introduce yourself. And you need to prepare talking points for interviews, talking points that will speak to experience that's relevant to the job you're interviewing for. So how do you come up with talking points? Again, I'll start with what not to do. Don't write it down. Don't write it because then you're going to be obligated to memorize it. And if you memorize it, you're gonna sound unnatural, you're gonna feel unnatural, you won't feel authentic. So what I suggest is that you write down words, phrases, and then you practice it. Practice it out loud. That will do two things. One thing is as you're talking, you, you might discover, oh, no, this is a better word to describe that or no, point B really needs to come after point C. So the more you practice it, the more those words are going to sound natural coming out of your mouth. Now for the sake of networking events, if you go to those, when you practice your elevator speech or your introduction of your speech, it's important to time yourself. I've been to a lot of different networking groups 
and they give you between 30 and 60 seconds to introduce yourself. And some of these groups use a stopwatch and they will cut you off if you go over. So obviously you don't want that to happen, A. And B, it's always appreciated when someone can come in on time on their introduction and they're concise and they're prepared, that will get you noticed. So practice. That is so correct, Nancy. <laughs> You're not making it up. I've been to both types of meetings and some of them have a stopwatch and they cut you off and that's very scary. It's <laughs> so awful, it's good to have practice. If you, if you practice, so there are two things you can do. You find out from whoever invited you to the meeting, how much time do I get? Big difference between 30 seconds and a minute. A minute yeah. is luxurious. And then you practice it and you time yourself so that when, when you're called on, Again, it's not memorized, but you said it enough times that even if you change a word or a phrase here and there, your timing is going to be really, really close. It's really going to be the same. And I've also been in networking meetings where the, the, the person, sometimes it's the one person who is concise and to the point and on time and prepared. Everybody went, wow. <laughs> it gets you noticed. I see, I see some nods and smiles. So yes, it gets you noticed. So while we're talking about practicing, I want, to I want to talk about doing practice interviews. And why is this important? Did you want to share your screen, Nancy, or you're, you're good? I'm good. OK. Yeah, Very good. I'm good. Thanks. I'm good. I, um, I recently coached a client who happened to be a classical pianist. And she had often occasion to present. And she would say to me, Sometimes after a presentation, I'd say, oh, I meant to say that. Why didn't I say that? And so I asked her, I said, well, how are you preparing? And she said, oh, I run it through in my head when I'm in the shower. Now, mind you, this is a Grammy award winning classical pianist. And I had to tell her to practice. I told her, you have to practice the way you're going to do it. You need to get it in your muscle memory. So once I said that, she understood. So you want to practice interviews in a couple of different ways. Uh, one is to practice virtually. There are different sites you can go on. I just checked one out recently. It's called Mr. Simon. And the way it works is that you sign on and you're given questions, recorded questions. And when you answer, you're given the opportunity to record yourself. And after the interview, you can look at the recording and do it again. That's one way to practice. Another important way to practice is with someone else. So if you have a job search buddy, practice with them. And if you don't have a job search buddy, find one. I work by myself. I'm a solopreneur and I have what's called a, an accountability partner, very much the same thing. And we meet every week. And at the end of every meeting, we talk about our goals, what we're going to accomplish. And I hear, I hear Richard, my partner, I just, as a keyboard typing, this is what Nancy's going to do this week. And so then I know I need to do those things. And at the beginning of our meeting, at the, the next week, the first thing we talk about is what did we do? And each of us has said to the other, oh, I really didn't want to do this thing. I was procrastinating. But then I remembered I was meeting with you today. And it really works. We keep each other honest. We keep each other on track. And we support each other. So you practice your interview with your buddy. And you help them in the same way. So as you're practicing, one of the things you should, you should be practicing is looking into the camera. So when I'm in a meeting, I've, I've been in so many of these meetings, it gave me a lot of time to practice. I use my peripheral vision to look at the other people, but you really need to practice looking into the camera and not at yourself. And what that's gonna do is get rid of a lot of your feelings of self-consciousness because people, when you're on camera, yes, people are looking at you, but they're not re you're not really in the spotlight. What people are taking in is your energy. So remember that. How do now, you relay energy through a camera? I mean, what? it's me talking to a camera. How do I relay energy into a camera? I'm, I was gonna get to that later. I'm so sorry. I'm jumping okay. ahead, Nancy, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine, do, do you mind? No, no, not at all. I'm gonna come back to that. What I'd like to talk about now is nerves. These events, job interviews, networking events,
can really be nerve wracking. And experiencing performance anxiety, nerves of any kind is really common. I, I recently coached someone who, he was very successful VP of sales who'd been dealing with performance anxiety for 20 years. And he's had some little tricks that he used, but he realized they don't work in every situation. And he said to me, yeah, you know, it, he was very self-conscious about it. He's like, yeah, you know, usually I'm fine, but every once in a while these weird nerves happen. And I told him, it's not weird, it's common. It's common because what you're doing is something that you care about. You care about the outcome. So you may have some symptoms, your heart racing, your palms being sweaty, needing to breathe. What I wanna do right now is give you some tools to manage nerves so that you can put them in your toolbox. So I'm gonna start with breathing. Breathing, oxygen rather, is a natural tranquilizer. So we're gonna do a breathing exercise together and it's called four, seven, eight breathing. You may have done it before, you may have heard of it. It comes from yoga, it's, it's quite common. And the way it works is you're going to inhale through your nose on a count of four, hold for a count of seven, and then exhale on a count of eight. And when you exhale, put a little force behind it, make a little noise. Christine has already promised she's gonna do this with me and I hope the rest of you will do it too. All right, um, tried. <laughs> before, before we do it, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna count you out. You don't have to worry about counting, just listen. So get yourself really comfortable in your chair, put your feet flat on the floor and let's get ready to breathe. And I'll count you out. So we're gonna inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, that's one item in your, in your toolbox that you can file away. Four, seven, eight breathing is a good thing to do several times a day. It's good to practice when you're not feeling stressed. And after this program is over, uh, when, when Christine sends you a video, you're also gonna get a document from me. Um, it's a PDF and in it is a link to a great video by Dr. Andrew Weil and it shows you how to do four, seven, eight breathing and you could do it with him and practice with him. So on the subject of breathing, it's also really important to remember to breathe. So do something that's gonna remind you to breathe. I've got a post-it, see that? And it's going right on my laptop. So write yourself a little note, put it on your laptop, put it somewhere where you need to be reminded to breathe. Some other things that, that you can do to pre prevent nerves is calming self-talk. Talk to yourself the way you would talk to a friend who was stressed, who was worried, who was nervous about an interview. I would even go so far as to take an index card or take your notebook and write down a phrase. It's either a phrase that's calming or encouraging, something you can think of right before you start that interview, right before you go into that event, something that's gonna help you. And I'll give you an example. I had another client who needed help with uh, performance anxiety and she was about to do an international competition. It was gonna be televised live on stage. This is when things were live. And she'd been a finalist three times. She was going for a fourth try and that's why she really needed, she felt she needed to have some tools to manage performance anxiety. So I handed her an index card because we were meeting in person and I asked her to write down a phrase. And when she wrote it down, she asked me if I wanted, wanted to hear it. I said, sure. And she said, let's get this. And when she said that, her whole face changed, her whole demeanor changed. 
And she did use it right before she went on. And she won. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but she did use all of those, all of those, uh, all of those coping skills. Other things that you can do to feel calm are maybe wear an item of clothing that makes you feel confident. Maybe have an object near you, something in your pocket that makes you feel confident. Another thing that you can do is control everything you can. So your preparation. Your preparation is, is what you're going to rest on. Now, er earlier when we started this, I had trouble sharing my screen. So yes, that was stressful. However, Christine also had my slides. If I wasn't gonna be able to share my screen, we had a backup. So that was under control. No matter what happened here, my mouse could have slipped out of my hand, my PowerPoint could have died, it was under control. So that made it a lot less stressful. So control everything you can, prepare everything you can. So the reason you wanna have these tools in your toolbox is so that they're available to you when you need them not just before you sign on for that interview or that networking event, but sometimes nerves can happen out of the blue during an event. And actually not very long ago, it happened to me. I was in a networking group, I didn't know anybody, but that doesn't matter. I was introducing myself. This is a topic I know well, I've done it many times. And all of a sudden I felt my heart racing. I needed to take a breath and my palms were sweaty. So I did several things all at once. I put my feet flat on the floor, because they weren't. I put my hands on my thighs. I took a deep breath. And I said to myself, Nancy, no one can tell. Now, that wasn't my phrase that I use. That's on my index card. But that was calming self-talk, and it worked. So if you have these tools in your toolbox, you can use them in the moment. Because when these nerves crop up, you can't ignore them. They're not going to go away unless you do something. And Taking a breath is really the most powerful thing you can do. But if you can, if you have those tools in your toolbox and you can use them all at once, they work. And it's true. I mean, I took a deep breath. I did all of those things at once. And all of a sudden my breathing went down, my heart rate went down. I, I don't remember if my palms were still sweaty, but it doesn't matter. I felt better. So just know that these tools really work. So let's imagine you're just about to go into your interview or your event and you need to get a little grounded so again i want you to put your feet flat on the floor put your hands on your thighs and if you have time before your interview it would really serve you well if you can have just a little bit of quiet time maybe just five minutes with no distractions to get yourself grounded this is a time to breathe and get grounded and focused and now we're going to do a little bit of a visualization exercise. So if you want to, you can close your eyes. It may help. Not necessary. So make sure you're comfortable in your chair. Your feet are flat on the floor. Your eyes are closed. I want you to picture that there's a string attached to the, the top of your head. It is, in fact, attached to the middle of the top of your head. And this string is very, very gently pulling your head up. Think of it as reverse gravity, just pulling your head very, very gently up, not your shoulders. You certainly don't want your shoulders going up. Just your head is being pulled very, very gently up and directing your energy up. Now open your eyes if you're in a position that you can see yourself. Your posture should be great. And your energy should be great because you're directing all of your energy up. Now, I want to answer Christine's question about how do you give energy to the camera? It, the challenge here, the challenge here is that it's not the same. We're not getting energy from the audience, but there are a few things that you can do. Like say you're in a a networking meeting and you don't know every, anyone. Well, during those introductions as people are coming in, pick a, friendly, pick a friendly face. And when you're talking into the camera, you talk to them. Now, I can see many of you and that's great. And a couple of you are nodding and smiling and that's wonderful. In fact, the person who's right under my camera is nodding and smiling. Thank you. 
<laughs> I don't have to do any work here. You're making it easy. I can also see Christine out of my peripheral vision. But sometimes you can't find that friendly face. And sometimes you can't see anyone. I have done webinars where I can't see anyone. And sometimes you might have to do a video interview where you are fed recorded questions and you have to talk to a camera and there's no one there. So incredibly challenging. When I taught public speaking at a university, this is something I often told my students. There's always gonna be somebody. Maybe they're sitting in the back, scowling, no interest in what you have to say, not paying attention at all. Don't give your energy to that person. You find the person in the room who's sitting forward in their seat, eager for everything you have to say, and you talk to them. Not that you eyeball them, but you take your energy from them. So now here we are, it's virtual, we can't see anybody. What do you do? You think about that person in your life who sits forward in their seat and is eager to hear what you have to say. Maybe they're your biggest fan. You look into the camera and you talk to them and your energy is gonna be great and you're gonna feel natural and you're gonna feel like yourself and you're gonna feel authentic. Great tips. Wow. Thank you, thank you. Um, I just wanna say one thing, uh, well, two things. One, when you're in a meeting, for example, there is a tiny bit of a silver lining uh, that about being virtual is that when you look in a camera, say you're in a networking meeting or a group interview, when you look in that camera, everyone thinks you're looking at them. They feel like you're looking at them. Now, you know, right now, for a fact, I'm looking into my camera, but perhaps you feel like I'm looking at you. So take comfort in that. There's a little bit of a silver lining there. So I have asked a lot of you in the last 40 minutes or so, and you may be thinking, oh, this is a lot. Like, do I really have to do all this? And I wanna leave you with this thought. Preparation is going to make you confident. And when you're confident, you're able to be your most authentic self. And that's what we want to see. So I'd love to hear if there are any other questions. Um, I have one. Um, this person was late to the meeting. So if you don't have that virtual background, uh, what are you looking for behind you, where to sit, natural light, that kind of thing. So we did talk about that, um, but that seems to be um, a recurring question. Sure, and and um, and I will say you're gonna get all this in, in the PDF, but uh, when I talked about backgrounds, I, I favor kind of simple backgrounds, nothing too distracting. You wanna make sure there aren't any bright, shiny objects that are going to, uh, reflect light and produce glare behind you. I mentioned that usually there's a frame photograph behind me. I took it down for this morning. I'll put it back up when we're finished. Um, let's see. I It's great if you have a little bit of depth behind you so that people feel like you're in the room. They're in the room with you and that's more engaging. Plus, people need to change the scene. We're all stuck at home. It's nice to look into someone else's world. Like when I look in uh, Christine's background. I feel I feel like I'm in that office with her, and it's great. And there's depth. So yes, everyone, look at Christine. <laughs> she's got, she's got a, a great background. Um, as and I did that on purpose just to get something to look at besides me. <laughs> no, no. It's, I mean, it, it's it's great, but there isn't anything. What's great about it is that you're far away enough from the, those objects on the wall that I can't see writing. I'm not distracted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So, right. and and I talked uh, earlier about having an accountability partner, which I have a job search buddy. That's when you get on camera, you go into, you have a, a, a virtual meeting with them and you say, how's my background? Is there anything distracting? Is there anything you'd like me to remove? I mean, usually it's a matter of needing to remove things. So I, put a I think what was um, really good that we had talked about before this program, Nancy, was that um, everyone has a job search buddy, even if they're not in job search, they have a buddy to bounce those ideas and suggestions off of so that they can tell you what, you know, the everyone else, the public is thinking about them and how they're perceived. And it's always good to be able to 
bounce something off of somebody else, even if you're in job search, which is why we all recommend having a job search buddy. Um, it doesn't matter what level you are. You, you have to remember that uh, Liberace and Lady Gaga and uh, all these people, these famous people had tutors. They had people that would help them in their singing and their dancing and their choreography and what works and what doesn't work, just like you. So it's not a you thing. It's not that you're so low on the total pole. You should just get feedback from somebody else. And, and that's what Nancy is trying to express. It, it's really good to, um, successful for you to have a job search buddy. I also want to mention, if you if you haven't looked at it, um, Christine has a, a YouTube channel with all of these recordings of guest speakers that you can see in case you missed one. There's a great one about interviewing. There's guest speakers who talk about LinkedIn, about elevator pitches, about networking. So it's a it's a great resource if you if you didn't see one of these presentations or. If you need a refresher, oh, what was it she said about interview? Go back and see it again. It's an incredible resource. We just had another question about uh, the website, Mr. Simon, is it free of cost? Well, guess yeah. what? One, it's on the handouts from the video for interviews um, to practice video interviewing. Two, I just spoke with the CEO of Mr. Simon last week through Zoom, of course, <laughs> and um, she wanted to know what are you struggling with? Uh, what is the next thing that she can add to what she is offering and it is free. So I highly recommend, there's a lot of different questions, a lot of behavioral questions, just so you can see how you're going to come out when you do practice some of those questions, the most common questions that you're probably gonna be asked. That way you get more confident you know what you're going to say, and you're really going to nail that interview. Sorry, Nancy. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. It, no, it, I, it's great. I did. I did try it out, and um, I think it's it's great preparation because you can't be over rehearsed. There is actually really no such thing. You can overthink. But there's no such thing as being over rehearsed. It's only going to make you confident because every time you do it. You're, you're gonna you're gonna improve. You're gonna find something to improve. In fact, I, I was doing a presentation recently, and I went from I went from point B to point D. I thought, why did I do that? Why did I do that? And then I realized, oh, because point C really belongs after point D. It's a better flow. So as you're going through your talking points, as you're rehearsing your talking points, the more you do it, the more you're gonna get into a flow that feels natural and, and that's gonna make you confident. And when you're confident, that's it. It's about being authentic because you, you're worried about, oh, did that sound right? Oh, was I clear? But if you practice it and you're confident in your talking points, you can rest on those because there will be questions you're not prepared for. So you wanna rest on those talking points that you're confident in, that you've That is so true, so true, Nancy. You have video interviews, you have regular interviews, and there's so many points that cross over for being confident that there's only a few tweaks for video and there's a few tweaks for in-person, but a lot of it is the same. And has anyone heard of, uh, have, uh, of the actor's nightmare? Okay, so the actor's nightmare, and every actor I know has had it, I've had it, even though I haven't been on stage since college acting in a play. For me, it's, I had it recently actually, I was uh, cast in a play and for some reason I didn't go to any rehearsals, but somehow I'd organized that in my mind that that was okay. And then I got there and I was just off stage about to go on and I realized A, I hadn't learned the lines and B, I didn't have a costume. Everybody else was in a period costume and I was just in my regular clothes. So. I've had, every actor I know has had it, I've had it. I've also had the director's nightmare, which is variation on the same thing, but it's all about being prepared. If I'd gone to a rehearsal, if I'd known my lines, I wouldn't have had the nightmare. So, I mean, that is our biggest fear as people in the theater is being unprepared. So take that for what, what you will. 
Awesome. Are there any more questions? Christian, sorry that I joined late yeah, and no uh, with some technical issues. And uh, just wondering, are you going to have this seminar again or so I can make up? Or it will not be, um, it will be, it's recorded and it'll be posted on the YouTube channel so you can rewatch the program okay. to get some mm -hmm. tips. Um, it won't be repeated for quite some time. So Nancy, you don't have to worry about me reaching out to you <laughs> yes. for a while. Everyone's a volunteer, so I try not to repeat our speakers just because I want to honor their time. Okay, and, I appreciate that. And also, that. in case you didn't hear me say this, along uh, along with that, there be there will be a document, a PDF that Christine will send you mm -hmm. that features my slides with a lot of the details. And also there are some uh, resources and, and links to videos at the end of that document for you. Great. Very helpful. So we'll get that said in, yes. in the email. And in the next 24 to 48 hours, depending on how long Zoom takes to upload, download, all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, appreciate it. Uh, one question I do have is how you handle the video interview, the one that is not a person, is by machine and they record you and what kind of behavior and uh, and signals they are recording and analyzing let's see um i think uh it's important to practice that i mean i think honestly i wish no one had ever thought of that kind of an interview <laughs> i really do uh, but we talked earlier about there's a a website you can go on it's called mr simon where you can practice exactly those kind of interviews where there isn't a person and my advice when you're looking into a camera and there's no person there is you picture the person you want to be talking to you picture your biggest fan and you talk to them and the advantage to one of these sites like mr simon is that you can record yourself and review your recording and do it again. And what I think what's important is that you get comfortable enough doing it so that you feel natural, so that you can be authentic because it is a completely artificial environment yes. <laughs> to yes. be talking yep. to no one. I mean, it's hard enough to be talking to someone who's a little box on your screen but it's, uh, like I said, I wish they hadn't invented that, but it's it's a fact of our lives. And so it's a matter of practicing it enough so that you feel comfortable and confident. One right. helpful okay. tip that I did get from, um, I watch a lot of webinars on different topics for job search. And one of the interview, video interview um, webinars that I watched, the helpful tip that came up in the chat box to put a colored post-it on the camera so that your eyes are always looking at that camera as opposed to the screen or the people on the screen and you're not looking down you're looking up and they see the whites of your eyes and your pupils and all that good stuff so um that helps bring your eye up with the mm -hmm. uh other posters to breathe <laughs> you know um, another post-it with your favorite tagline and that kind of thing to help you get through this whole process. Yeah. And that's a that's a, a, a great tip. And um, again, practice will help you too. You just practice, it's, it's muscle memory. It's like mm -hmm. driving a car, it may feel unnatural. I mean, right now, I'm very used to talking to all of you and, and looking at the camera just because I've practiced it. Yes, thank indeed. you. Are there any other questions? I think the website was posted in the chat box um, from Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. And um, it will be posted on the YouTube channel as well. But if you want to get a jump start on it beforehand, it's right there for you. Mr. Simon.ai. Very easy to use. Yes. And it's free. Feel free to share the site with anyone. Anyone can join, anyone can practice which is awesome. Yeah. So remember, you're not in this mountain alone on an island all alone. There are lots of other people that are unemployed or employed trying to help somebody up. So find a job search buddy.
definitely. And also, I think it's important to give yourself credit. You're doing something incredibly challenging and an incredibly challenging time. So give your credit, yourself credit for that. Good for you. Great. Very good. Well, thank you all for coming today and taking time out of your schedule and taking a break from shoveling. Uh, if that applies to you and listening to Nancy and give you tips on video interviewing. I am going to stop the recording and as soon as I get that information from Zoom, I will reach out to you and post the video on YouTube and send you the link along with the chat box and the helpful hints that uh, Nancy has provided. All right. Very good. Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank and you. You're Thank so you. Bye. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.